The 2019 British Columbia Major Midget League Winter Classic between the Caribou Cougars and the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs was a historic event. The weekend featured two games in Fort St. James. The first, indoors at the Fort Forum. <laughs> One historic match at the Ernie Sam Memorial Arena, the first outdoor midget game ever to be played in Canada. The weekend spawned an intense rivalry between these two teams that reached its climax two months later in the league playoffs semi-final. How will the 2020 Winter Classic weekend compare? Time can only tell on the road to the Winter Classic. Our journey with the Caribou Cougars begins with an afternoon practice led by assistant coach R.J. Barra four days before the Winter Classic game at Ernie Sam Memorial Arena against the Vancouver Northwest Hawks. On Saturday the 11th and Sunday the 12th, the weekend prior, the Cougars dropped their doubleheader versus the league-leading Okanagan Rockets. The coaching staff was not happy with the effort put forward. Yeah, I think it was a it was a disappointing weekend for us as a group. I think we expect more out of our group. Um, it just was just nothing was going our way, but we weren't uh, we weren't creating as much as we should. We weren't we weren't hard on our sticks. We weren't hard on battles. And I think we took a step back against a very good hockey team, best team in our league, and uh, they burned us. I mean, we, we need to come with a better effort than we did. And uh, I think the guys are aware of that, that we, uh, that we let an opportunity slip, and, and we have to learn from that moving forward so that we can uh, close out the season on a high note. Uh, yeah, right now we're in fifth. Uh, before last weekend, we had some games in hand. We still do, but uh, we're chasing some teams now. Uh, we got to get some wins, uh, and the time is now. I mean, there's, we're closing out the season here. We got... I think 16 games left, and, and we got a couple big sets coming up here, and uh, we need to find a way to get some points uh, to climb that ladder. This practice was focused primarily on skating, and there was lots of it. Then, lines back and forth. One line for every goal against versus the Rockets. Twelve. Finally, they finish off with timed sprints up and down the Olympic-sized ice surface. Following the practice, the exhausted team meets in the change room for a video session with assistant coaches RJ Barra and Jordan Duncan. We gotta talk to our D there because that could easily been in the top in two, right? Next one. Well, Haas is too low because he has to go cover that guy. But uh, D and centerman, right? We need to play man on man there, right? We need to communicate there. We can't just be abandoning that guy in front. Haas does a good job bailing us out here, else that guy's gonna bury in the slot. We wanna play the right way, and that wasn't it. We gotta get back to our game. Okay, we gotta get back to doing what makes us a good hockey club. <coughs> Okay, and it's going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to start the prep for the Hawks. Okay, we're going to start our prep for the smaller ranks. We're going to get to work at 6.30. Okay, everyone get up, <coughs> shower, do whatever you need to do, because I don't want to have the same first two drills we did last Wednesday and waste our time. Okay, I want to go into a couple drills and then get right away into what we want to do on the weekend. Is that good? Yeah. Are we all on the same page in here? Yeah. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Thanks, guys. 
Hi, Brennan Bond here with Caribou Cougars. Here with rookie forward, Team BC alumni, uh, fifth overall, fifth round draft pick to the Seattle Thunbirds. Hi, Brennan Bond here with Caribou Cougars. I am here with Team BC alumni, Seattle Thunderbirds signee, and sixth round draft pick, Nico Myotovic. Nico, how do you feel about playing in your first ever Winter Classic? Why is your face so red? Oh, I'm excited. Um, I'm looking forward to get four points up there. You know, it's going to be a battle, but. Um, Take 20. <laughs> Nico Matavik here with Brennan Bott. Um, voted 2020 Sexiest Man Alive and one of the most famous people on the TikTok app. What are your thoughts on the upcoming Winter Classic? Oh, it's a great opportunity. We gotta get the four points. And you know what? To get that, we gotta get pucks in deep, get in, get in the corners hard, right? I agree. Um, Sky 15, everybody else have a good day. Um, being your last year, your 17 year old year, what are you gonna bring to the boys uh, throughout the weekend? Uh, just gotta be an energy guy out there. Cut this. <laughs> hey. Gotta be an energy guy out there. And you know what? I already said it. Get pucks deep and get in there. Awesome. And uh, why are you so sweaty? I was watching cops. There's still yet to be a winner in the Winter Classic, so we're looking for the first W. Uh, last year, the ice started to like melt a little bit, and uh, they had to end the game after we couldn't play overtime. So uh, hopefully the weather holds out this year and we get to finish it off. Meanwhile, the ice crew at Ernie Sam Memorial Arena is working tirelessly to get the ice prepared for the weekend. Man, my hands are frozen. Braving the coldest temperatures in 40 years, capping off at minus 44, the Zamboni takes the ice for the first time, just three days before the first outdoor game. Cracking on me. Don't give in. Without a fight, out there on your own, sitting naked by the The twenty nineteen Winter Classic weekend was a two game event. This year, it has been up to five games, as the Northern Capitals AAA female midget team will also be taking the ice on the weekend for a triple header against the Greater Vancouver Comets in the Fort and Vanderhoof. What is necessary to top the Comets this weekend? I think we just need to work as a team and stay in positive mindset. I feel like, yeah, we have to work as a team and we also have to, like, know where we're going to go with the puck before we actually like pass it because it's a small ice surface. It's important. Will the cold temperatures play a factor at all in the outdoor game? Um, I think we're prepared for it. I mean, we live up north already, so we got to be used to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm honestly going to be really cold, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to layer up. Yeah, I'm not going to sure. wear long sleeves and wear leggings under my queue. It's going to be cold. Um, I think that there's really nothing that's going to change as far as a coaching philosophy goes in our systems. Um, I think the majority of it will be to uh, make sure the girls have fun, uh, play as, uh, you know, our, our systems. Um, the only the big difference will be playing in a different rink, uh, especially the outdoor rink. So my whole team's excited about that. And uh, uh, other than that, I think we're not going to change too much and we'll stick to what we uh, what we've practiced for the last while. Keys to victory against the Comets, um, you know, a lot of pressure, uh, puck pressure on them. Don't give them a, lot of whole, a whole lot of time and space uh, is the main thing. And uh, they're a team that moves the puck really well. And, you know, when you take away that time and space, uh, you know, they have a little bit more um, problems getting out of their own end. So we're going to keep that up. And hopefully that small Fort St. James rank is going to play in our uh, favor. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it, it's been... Uh, it's been out there for a while that this has been going on, so the girls are super excited to, uh, you know, head to Vanderhoof and uh, show uh, a crowd that they've never played again, or played for uh, what female hockey is all about. It's going to be exciting. We've got two great teams that are going to be there. Wrapping up the practice and prepared to host the first place Comets, the Capitals get ready to hit the road. The next time they will lace up, it will be in Vanderhoof for the first game of the Winter Classic weekend. 
At Ernie Sam Memorial Arena, the crew continues to work hard just the day before the Winter Classic is set to take place. Last year's warmer weather and deteriorating ice seems to be a distant memory as the team has worked through blistering cold all week long. This year's question is, will it warm up? And if not, how cold is too cold? Well, we've been here since Monday, so um, probably anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a day just to be able to put in ice. Um, you know, we had some, some uh, good base that we had from the Cosley and their group uh, starting on the Monday. Uh, last year we started with two rinks here at the Sam Memorial and over at the Ford Forum we had no ice when we started on the Monday uh, last year so we were further ahead in both rinks. Well, we had some alumni dads here, uh, Mike Goodwin, uh, Mr. Allen, Steve Allen, um, Vinny McKinnon from the council was out here. Those three guys were outstanding, Dennis Hardchuk. Uh, so those four to five people, including myself, out here every single night and uh, we had some great help from the ladies in, in our office um, the band office giving us a hand every day just to help us get the dressing rooms done they had their uh, contracting crew there dealing with that the zamboni room uh, mainline plumbing and heating uh, putting in uh, putting in uh, the navion uh, heat on demand so that was really good to have that our hands weren't getting too cold yeah, we had a uh, little hollow ice uh, here to my right and uh, what happened there was just got air underneath uh, the ice between the ice and the pad. Uh, so uh, Mike Goodwin, the genius that he was, we were seeing that the Zamboni was kind of sinking into the ice a bit in the one spot and cracking more than what you do with normal ice or natural ice. So we ended up taking a drill bit and drilling down about the size of a loony and then just pouring hot water right directly onto the pad and having it spread out underneath and it worked out. Hardened up over uh, Thursday night and we're good to go so we're pretty happy about that. First of course being a cement pad we have to get it all cleaned. It have to be spotless clean before you even can lay any water down because you don't want uh, you don't want nothing dirty, no oil, nothing on there. So that took uh, quite a process. And, um, with weather, depending on weather conditions, uh, we were working when it was minus five, minus ten, which was awesome conditions to put in ice, but all of a sudden it got to like minus thirty with wind blowing, and which had made it very, very hard. You got to be very careful in the process of uh, doing that because you put, you put too much, things start cracking and it doesn't freeze properly. And I'm actually quite amazed that we uh, did uh, get it done fighting against the uh, weather conditions. Well, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't there for the whole process, but I guarantee you, uh, let me see, I would say an average of 10, 12 hours a day uh, Say it took them seven to eight days, probably uh, 56, 60 hours of uh, getting getting this uh, done. Yeah, there is a there is an art to uh, putting this ice in, and if you don't have the proper people to help you do it, you ain't gonna get it done. In Fort St. James, one day before the Winter Classic, some of the Caribou Cougars, alongside assistant coach Jordan Duncan visit David Hoy Elementary School for a Q&A session with some young fans. Still I kind of like this feeling of being left behind. Meanwhile, in Vanderhoof, the northern capitals do the same at Evelyn Dixon Elementary School.
guys been playing hockey for? Um, I've been playing hockey for 10 years. Uh, I think this is my 10th or 11th year. Uh, this is my 12th year. When was howling, I was happy to be inside because Hockey Night in Canada was about to start. This show made every Saturday night in winter very special. I never missed it. The team I cheered for was the Toronto Maple Leafs, and my favorite player was their captain, Daryl Sittler. He wore a white sweater with a big blue maple leaf on the chest and number 27 on the back. Once the school visits reach their conclusion, the Capitals head back to the hotel for food and rest just hours before puck drop at the Vanderhoof Municipal Arena. I think that everyone's really excited about it. You know, we haven't had um, you know senior hockey or any junior hockey here for years, and and we don't get big events like this in uh, in Vanderhoof. So, you know, you can see by the signs on the glass that everyone's happy to see a local girl come back and be able to play in front of her home crowd, and uh, and even tomorrow in Fort St. James with some of the boys from from Vanderhoof and from Fort St. James. I think it was it was mostly Trevor Sprague that uh, approached us and wanted to do a winter a winter classic style of uh, um, event that uh, showcased some of the the local local girls. We have one local girl on the uh, on the female team, and then I think there's there's three boys on the uh, on the male team that will be playing playing the Fort Saint games tomorrow. With puck drop under an hour away and the arena starting to fill up, the Winter Classic weekend is about to officially begin. Well, hello and welcome to the Vanderhoof Municipal Arena in Vanderhoof, BC, as we kick off the BC Winter Classic Weekend between the Northern Capitals and the Greater Vancouver Comets. Brendan Pollard alongside Will Peters as we get, sir, get set for game number one of this triple header between the Comets and the Capitals. The Comets coming into the night, like you said, first place in the female midget league, 16-1-0-0 with 24 points, again one loss in 17 games, sitting in first place. The Northern Capitals coming into tonight in third, 10-7-2-0 with 22 points. The Northern Capitals are confident that they can stay in it with this Comets team. And we're off and running in BC Winter Classic weekend from Vanderhoof as we drop the opening puck. Right off the opening face-off, the Comets proved why they are ranked number three in Canada, finding the back of the net early and often. ...games this season from nearby Prince George, but it's the Comets coming away with it here. Greater Vancouver, quick shot, oh, what a nice goal there by the Comets. Madison, Madison Weeb on the ninth goal of the season going coast to coast, and just like that, the Comets draw first blood 
on what looked to be an effortless goal. So Madison Weeb, her ninth of the season, puts the Comets on the board for an early 1-0 lead. Now back come the Comets for more. Quick shot saved there by the Capitals. And it comes back now to Fowler. Quick shot, oh what a shot there, top shelf. That's two high ones early on. Good point shot there by the Greater Vancouver Comets. This was Vanessa Schaefer and it's 2-0 just like that for Greater Vancouver. Waved off, they got in clean, Elliott chipped it back in, now it's Buglione. Quick shot, oh another sharp angle goal, just a precision fest right now for the Comets. As Buglioni makes some pay and it's now a 3-0 game. Well that was an elite, elite level shot from Buglioni coming down again the uh, right wing wall and goes high on Tessa Sturgeon. Yeah, so now we got a goaltending change for the Capitals. And in the other net, Haley McLeod coming into tonight's game with a record of 8-0-0-0 with a 0 0.88 goals against average. Yes, goals against average, not save percentage. 0 0.88, an average of under a goal a game. Well, that sounds about right when you give up less than a goal per game and they score another one. Do the Comets. As Grace Elliott right on the doorstep gets it past Petticlerk Crosby. And the engine is rolling at full speed for Greater Vancouver as it's now a 4-0 lead. She was looking for Anderson, nobody home. Now Curley gets it back, one-on-one. -on -one. Nice little move, Brett Curley in, quick shot. Oh, what a stop there. First real test of the game for Verbeek. And or Haley McLeod, rather. And that's where he stand after 20 minutes of play. It's the Comets for the Capitals, no score. Uh, very important for the Caps here to regroup in the intermission. After a strong opening frame for the Comets, the Capitals start to find their legs in the second period, but not before more offense from Greater Vancouver. Welcome back to second period action from the Vanderhoof Municipal Arena. 4-0 Greater Vancouver Comets heading into the middle frame. Curly shot up high that hit Gaskell in front. She's none the worse for wear. Now Hinch on a breakaway. Hinch in, quick shot. Top cheddar, they score. So you give the Comets an inch. They'll take a mile, and all you have to do is call up on Hinch to get the job done. She does exactly that. Chip to the line, not out. Good keeping, though, by the Capitals. As Curly continues to dig away. Chip by Gooley, looking for a partial break. Spinning and shooting to the legs. They score. It's Gooley. Then I think Boone got a piece of it as well. Either way, the Capitals are on the board. Mulder will stop it back in, but not before the Capitals are forced to tag up. Now it's a three on one for the Comets. Back to Schaefer, waiting, puts it up. Oh, cross ice feed. Oh, and a stop there by Petticlerk Crosby as they rob the Comets. And back down the ice we go. It's a two on one for the Capitals. Alexander with Bautista, lead feed pass. Oh, it just goes off the blade. Knew that was a little bit high. Waits doesn't shoot. Curly gets it back one more time. Shoots again. Sharp angle. Hit the goalpost. Rebound in front. Mulder. Oh, the goaltender is down. They couldn't jam it free. What action in front of the Comets net once more as the Capitals continue to come alive. But players, it's redirected. And now here comes Davis. Partial break. Davis backhand try off the side of the post and in. Oh, she was dead tired, but she had just enough left in the tank to backhand it past Crosby. And it's a 6-1 game, courtesy of Kerry Barry Davis. Second period draws to a close. 6-1 Comets after 40 minutes of play from the Vanderhoof Municipal Arena. Both teams continue to trade goals in the third and final period, seeing the Comets skate away with an 8-2 victory. Third period action underway in Vanderhoof between the Comets and the Northern Capitals. Elliott. Trying to get it ahead now, Schaefer, partial break, quick shot, short side, they score. And it's 7-1 Comets, and for Schaefer, that's her first in the game. The Comets, that was Rushbrook getting it out, now they try and speed it back in. Now it's Armstrong one more time, she's one on two, looking to center, it's Outhouse, quick shot, and they score, Paige Outhouse! Off another defensive breakdown by the Comets, and it's a 7-2 game. Quick shot, sharp angle, top shelf goal, Swiderski. She's been all over the puck this period, and she makes it an 8-2 game. Stymied there by Sketcher Elliott. Maybe one last chance for a shot. 
three on one here. Elliott back to Bugliano. Oh, it goes underneath their blade, and that'll do it. So the Greater Vancouver Comets flex their offensive muscles here in Vanderhoof on a Friday night, skating to an 8-2 victory over the Northern Capitals. Once again, these two teams will rematch. Just 45 minutes north in Fort St. James in the Fort Forum at 2 p.m. You can find us back The lone here. Vanderhoof local, Ella Boone for the Capitals, gave her thoughts post-game. Um, it could have been better, but I think we did play hard. And, yeah, the score didn't really show how we played. I thought we had a good game. What was it like uh, in your return to your hometown, Vanderhoof, playing in front of this uh, big crowd? Um, it was a little nerve-wracking at first, but um, in the end, I really enjoyed it, and it was... Yeah, one of the coolest things I think I've ever done. With the first game of the Winter Classic weekend in the books, both teams gear up for an eventful Saturday and Sunday of hockey and history. Next time on the Road to the Winter Classic.